Okay, sounds good. So what's that do again? Uh, it's plus two morale bonus on attack rolls, saves, and skill checks. All right, sounds good. Lasts for a long time. Did you want it on Razik or Carl? I just want to make sure. Would it do anything for Carl and his... No, probably not. You're right. Razik then. Yep. I think the coding on the spell here isn't right. There's no way to apply an effect. Oh, all right. No problem. So what does he get? Plus two morale bonus on attack rolls, saves, and skill checks. All righty. And how many rounds is that for? 10 minutes to level. So it's going to be uh, 120 minutes. <coughs> okay. Sorry, guys. I got a little cold. I apologize. Alrighty. Um, you have another. You want to do a move or anything? Um, no, I'm going to stay put. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot to do the aura menace on bows and chingo. So I'm going to do that real quick. Oh, bows failed. Really. Wow. All right. And Chingo succeeded. That's funny. All right. Uh, Chingo doesn't do anything. So Kelvos has to roll a percentile die, correct? Yeah. And he gets 20. So 20 is act normally. Does that seem yeah. right? <laughs> oh, man. That sucks. Right? Yeah. Oh, man. So he, uh, he casts a spell. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Gotta switch guys. No problem. Um, you recognize it as a 6, 15, 20, yep. As a heal spell. Sorry, he's going to have to walk though. 5, 10, 15. And he touches the angel in front of him. And heals him back to full health. <laughs> Alright. And then uh, that'll be his turn. Okay, Carl. Um, he's unconscious, so it'll be the next turn that it applies. Alright, Tanner. Sorry, I forgot to click off his gaze, too. You guys can't see it, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to try and touch attack... Uh... The angel? Yeah. Okay. Don't have a die for touch attack, so uh, I forget how that goes. So on your, uh, if you open up your um, combat, your main screen on Tanner. Uh, oh, is it the melee one? Uh, should be under. Let's see. I think if you click on the combat tab, does it not have it in there? I got a uh, melee, ranged, and CMB. Oh, um, I got a better way, better way to do it. So on the far right, there's the plus minus indicator. If you click on that tab in the top right corner, there's a touch attack button. Okay. 
Do you see it there? Okay. Um, yeah. Yep, click that so it's highlighted and then do your uh, your attack. What attack are you doing? I'm going to try and debuff him with uh, Vision of Madness. Oh, okay. Is it? It's not coded in for your guy? There's a touch. I think it just has the states. I could try that. Uh, let me see. Where's it at? Vision of Madness? Oh, I don't have it in there. Is it a touch attack that you have to do? Here. Yeah, yeah it's a melee touch attack. Yep, just give me a second and I'll have it in there. Oh, I see it. It's there you okay, go. No. Yep, there you go. So try that. So it's a hit? It's a hit, but um, you don't get past his SR, I think. Correct. Oh, it's a critical. No, it hits. Yep. You're good. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to boost his skills 5 and debuff his attack and... Saves five. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Sorry. All right, Razik, what you got, buddy? Okay, five foot step. All right, so the last angel is dead. Anything else, Carl, that you have there? All righty. Bose is up. So Bose's uh, Aura of Menace disappears because he's dead. And Cormer, is it on you? No, it was on Carl, I think, was the other one it was on. I don't think it was on anybody else. All right, Bose is up. Oh. <laughs> Alright, two hits. Nice. Alright. Cormier, you're up, buddy. Alright, bear with me. My fingers are covered in queso. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the sickening effect. Right? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Here we go. All right, electrical ray. All righty. So you hit no damage. Hit no damage. Hit no damage. Bummer. I know, it sucks, doesn't it? Good light show, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Chingo is just going to stand there, right, you guys? So, Kelvos takes a five foot step back and casts a wall. Oh, wait, he's oh. going to do his confusion. <clears throat> oh, yeah, 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 thanks. Oh, yeah, I knew there was a reason. Thanks, buddy. How do you do this time? Oh, man. Figures, doesn't it? 
Cheese and rice. Yeah. Right. Cheater, right. cheater, <laughs> cheater, <laughs> cheater. Do do. All right. So he casts uh, casts a spell. And, uh, yeah, don't have any clue what this one is. And um, he completes the spell. And kind of gets a big smile, but you guys see nothing. <laughs> All right, Carl's turn. So Carl needs a DC 17 for his fortitude save, if you don't mind. Come on, Carl. Oh, he passes. All oh. right. <laughs> I don't like making it by his chin chin chin. So uh, Carl is unconscious on the ground. He'll be up next turn. All right. Um, Tanner, you're up. Oh, Razik. Yeah, you know it's uh, this. I'll continue my aura, which doesn't cost me anything. Alrighty. I kind of thought so without the aura. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll uh, spontaneous cast. Okay. Why did I close it? How do you close it? Click the X on the right. It should close for you. No, I closed it. Oh, did you? you know, I'll bring it back to you. Hang on. Bear with me. I'm lost in my own action tab. No worries, man. What are you trying to get? Cure critical for Carl. A swell spot. Uh, a swell spell swap again. Under the zero for cleric spells. About oh, right in the middle. Oh, I'd close that next. Oh, okay, here I'll I'll cast it for you. No problem. I got it. You got it? Okay, good. You'll probably have better rolls than I will. Nice. All right. <clears throat> Razik's up. Oh, whoops. I made myself... I'll get it. I'll get it. I was going to... looking at putting it on Calvo so we remember. No problem. I'll try to get to him. See if he made it uh, just a wall or a sphere. Yeah, so you get um, right in front of you and it's... Um, you are unable to get any farther. And it's made as a wall. Well, no. I have I have airwalk, so if, if I try to find if it's not a sphere, then I try to go over it. Yep, it goes all the way up to the ceiling. Oh, I see. Oh, stupid me! I know. Well, that's all right. I know what you're thinking now. <laughs> all right, sounds good. <laughs> That's all good. So uh, you gotta go through the ceiling. Through the yeah. 
What's your move? I forget what your move is. The ceiling's 30 yeah, feet high. It's just a 30, though. Okay, gotcha. So, it's, I'm just moving. Alright, gotcha. <laughs> I love it. You have haste, though. Can you move farther with haste? Oh, cool. I'll be moving 50, then. Alrighty, sounds good. <laughs> so, you'll be able to get uh, just above him. I guess you would... Oh, you have air walk on. Yeah, so you'd just be just above him. So you could get an attack in if you wanted. Yep. Cool. Nice. Okay. Bose is up. So Bose kind of saw um, Razik kind of bouncing against this invisible wall, and he went all the way up and through the ceiling and came over on the other side. So, to you guys, it's pretty obvious there's a wall there. Even though you can't see it. Okay. Guess I'll shoot at the wall. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, right. <laughs> It'll be like he's shooting at that guy, so straight ahead. Yep, perfect. You just need damage. Uh, um, I need uh, yeah, just damage. Okay. So you see the arrows kind of hit this invisible sort of wall that's in front of you, and they kind of bounce off and kind of fall down to the ground. All right. Do you want him to move at all or stay right there? I'm going to stay right there. All right. Sounds there, good. There are ma magic arrows, if that helps. Uh, it does help, yes. All right, Cormier, you're up. Okay, no, this isn't going to work, but I'm going to try Disintegrate. Uh, you, I love it. Sounds great. That actually does work. Yep, it completely yeah. destroys the wall, and the wall is gone. Nice. <laughs> I love it. Whoops. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, all right, so 74. Yeah, let me fix that real quick. Hang on a second. Uh... Oh, it's actually pretty easy to fix. Oh, maybe it's not. Oh, whoops. There we go. All right. <laughs> yeah, so you completely disintegrate the wall, and that's exactly what would work for you. Here you go, Cormier. Little, little, uh, so you guys know what you're dealing with next time, so now that you've seen it. All right. Um, let's see. Who's up next? Uh, Chingo skips, right? We skip Chingo. Kilvos. Kilvos, Kilvos, Kilvos. Gotta do his roll. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. What's 81 do? Attacks anything around him? 81, attack nearest creature. <laughs> oh. Alright, alright. That's Actually, it's probably a good thing, to be honest with you. So... Because he was going to five foot step and cast another spell, so he probably protected him actually. All right, so he uh, takes his uh, great sword that uh, he was kind of holding in, in one hand, sort of dragging around, and swings it up at uh, Razik. Gets two attacks and hits with one and misses with the other. And uh, does a wee bit of damage. All right, Carl's up. Oh, Carl's uh, awake. Carl's not unconscious anymore. 
Plus you healed him, so that made him not unconscious as well. I'm sorry. What'd you like Carl to do? He up? Yeah, Carl's up. Yep, he got healed, so... Uh, he needs to Does come he up from like prone. Stand up or something? Correct, yeah. yep. Which is a move, right? Yeah, that's correct. That's a move yes. action. But he has haste. Uh huh. Well, that's still two moves, right? A yep. move to stand yeah. up and another move to correct. Move to that's correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So that's it. Then. Alrighty. Alrighty. Um, and so this falls to uh, Tanner. Take a negative if I throw in there. Move in there. Yeah, I'm going to hit him with my frost hammer. Okay. He gets an extra one because he. Yeah. Uh, fudge. All right. <laughs> I love the frost hammer, but it just never really works for you unless you're not playing, and then everybody else gets like twenties and stuff. So it's weird. It's like you're cursed. Yeah, it's most mostly a beer cooler, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Razik, you're up, buddy. All right, so you're able to hit him. Should do it. Another hit. User in your channel timed out. Uh oh, we lost him. Oh no. Hey, Cormer, we left the uh, shield and armor in the other room that that guy dropped. We gotta go back and get that. Oh, the sword? Yeah, sword and armor, yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna do his damage for you guys, alright? Maybe if I can figure out his character. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He has like his attacks look like your spell books, I have to be honest with you, for his weapons. I think yeah. it's I think it's this he, He's got more too, I think. Yeah. He dropped out, right? Yeah, right. That's all right. He killed it, so I figured one one would do it, so He'll be back in a second. So um so he uh kills the the creature that's there and he kind of falls to the ground, but he doesn't disappear like the others did, so. Yeah, there goes Nate. All right. me, me and Cormer get the loot. Yeah, you guys get the loot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Um, there will be a, uh, an immediate vision that will occur as well, but I'll wait till he comes back. So, um, do you guys want to kind of search the dude? Yeah. You gonna do detect magic? He's got a breastplate and a great sword. Yeah, detect magic on it. Alrighty, so they both glow. And let's see who has the 
Spell, higher spellcraft. Uh, I think it's Rezik has a higher... I, th I thought it was too. Alright. Let's grab his... Uh... You guys want to assist him? Uh, nope. Yeah, you got it. Ten. You got it. That's ten. That's an assist. Ten or higher. Right? I guess we'll take it. Ah, why not? For skills, we're not going to use the critical. All right, so you guys both, so that's plus four for both of you. Uh, let's see. And Bo's plus six. And Spellcraft, yeah, he does, you're right. He's got 16. So the uh, Breastplate is a plus three Breastplate. And then... Um, oh, you guys want to roll uh, some help for him on the... Uh, on the second uh, piece, the sword. There you guys go. 316. And yep, so the uh, great sword is an unholy great sword plus one. All right, satch the, or take those. And yep, those away sounds good. So as you guys um, kind of look at the wall and get a little bit closer, you see that there's this, um, the room is entirely glass, and it's there's like thousands upon thousands of uh, Cayuse worms that are kind of swarming along the glass, um, uh, you know, from pretty much uh, uh, 10 feet down to the floor, or from the floor 10 feet up along the walls on all three walls. Uh, that's kind of what, uh, what you see. Hey, welcome back, man. Sorry about that. That's all right. You uh, you destroyed him with one attack. I, I rolled your damage for you, um, and then you guys found uh, he. So. Yeah, he had a plus three breastplate um, and an unholy plus one sword. So, and then um, that's pretty much all we did. And I was. Uh, that's interesting. How did that pop up that way? Um, and then I was kind of describing to these guys, um, kind of the wall is uh, pretty much glass all the way around from the, f the floor all the way up to the ceiling, um, you know, or to about 10 feet is this uh, um, glass area where it's just thousands upon thousands of Cayuse worms kind of swarming all about themselves on the wall. Um, and then immediately after you guys um, destroy the uh, um, uh, Kelvos, um, you guys see the, the ruins of the, the room kind of waver and fade, and it's replaced by a well-equipped torture chamber. Uh, you see uh, there's wailing victims that are strapped to hor horrific devices uh, that hang in uh, the background from chains. In the foreground stand two figures. One is a handsome man dressed in a flowing robes. Facing him is a strange six-armed creature that almost uh, looks as much as an insect as it does a humanoid. The insect creature's eyes are hollow sockets containing pinpoints of deep light within. Its flesh is rotting and festering. Uh, the green globes it wears uh, and the green robes it wears are old and moth-eaten. Uh, the creature wields a long green crystal rod in one hand and a cruel hooked rod in another. In two other hands it holds a jeweled gold box that it presents to the man who takes it and sets it upon the table. He opens it and using a pair of iron tongs withdraws a green writhing worm. The man expression changes from one, uh, changes from one of uh, bewilderment to exaltation as he looks upon the worm, and then the vision slowly fades. So you guys automatically recognize that this is the same man that was on your first vision that was sitting on the, the uh, um, pedestal and as well as in the second vision. Um, if I can have a religion and a nature uh, roles, that would be great when you have a chance and then I do have a picture of uh, the creature that it saw and Nate I know you're gonna know this so easy you guys will get it with your roles here so knowledge nature so Bose recognized this as a um, undead spell weaver creature uh, Razik you also confirm that And then um, I have a picture of the guy as well. Oops. Nasty. Yeah, right. And then uh, while you're rolling, I have another picture. That's a picture of the guy himself with the, gray, the, with the worm. And Tanner, you recognize the worm as um, the actual Cayuse worm itself that he was taking out of the box.
Nate, you want to tell them about a spell weaver, undead spell weaver, what it is or what it does, if you've ever fought it. I don't know if either Cormor or Tanner has ever fought it. I don't actually. I think I think they can uh, like uh, cast multiple spells or something. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So for e spell ever per arm or something? That's correct. So they can cast a spell per arm ever for a standard action. So technically, that one could cast six spells at once. Wow. Yeah. What if you grapple? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. All right. Um, so the vision fades, and you guys uh, see that the room is back to the way you see it now with kind of some broken uh, um, utensils and things kind of laying around on the ground. Everybody okay? You guys all doing all right still? Did, did the other guy have a sword? Uh, yeah, the, you you missed that. Yeah, yeah. Tanner said you guys. He told Cormer you guys need to go back and pick it up. Yeah, the sword and armor, I think. Yep, sword and armor. That's exactly what he had. So you guys want to go back? Yeah. All right. So you guys go back into uh, into that area there, and the armor is still there, and the sword. You're going to cast a tech magic, I assume, right? Because I think it's a more zero level spell for you. Yeah. Yeah. So the only the sword glows. Actually, no, the sword doesn't glow. I apologize. Nothing glows. All right. I take my spellcraft back. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Good call. All right. Well, let me unlock the tokens here. So, what would you guys like to do now? You want to do the room to the south, or? Yeah, sounds good. All right. I'm gonna put bows over by the door. I'll let you guys move yourselves. I'm gonna channel on us once too before we. Sure. Going. No problem. Your guys' um, prayer would be gone by now, so I'm going to can cancel that out real quick, all right? Cool. Because if you guys identified each of those, let's see, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. So we'll say ten rounds. Let's see what's left. Yeah, I would have went away. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Is there any other special effects that are still on anybody that uh, cancel? Let's see. Oh, favorite train should be on. I'm sorry. For uh, bows. I guess you're, yeah, you're kind of underground. Uh, let's see. Or maybe dungeons. Is. Raza, can you look down your list and make sure that I don't have anything on you that needs to come off? Heroism will stay on for a while, but the rest of the stuff, just look through your list. All right. Nice. Uh, heroism. Uh, it's on for... Uh, for oh, no, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, you got a long time with that. So, 10 minute per level, so I think it's like 122 hours you'll have it on. Long after your fight is over, I'm sure. Or <laughs> you guys rest. Before we pop this door, I'm going to cast... Uh... I cast bless on us. Alrighty, sounds good. Alright. I'm gonna start my aura, aura madness too. Just okay. Alright, sounds good. Um, do you want to have uh, Bo's um, listen to the door again and sneak in? Oh, Razik's peeking through. Razik, are you peeking through? Yep. All right, so Razik, you see what appears to be a library. There's dozens of bookshelves that line the wall and stand back to back amidst the chamber. Um, that's kind of your general initial view that you see from where you're at right there. No pictures. Um, give me a perception. That's for the lesson. Yeah, uh, Bose doesn't hear anything inside. Uh, Razik... 
you see some movement along the back wall, but you're not able to tell what what type of uh, creature or what it is. Okay, I relay that. Alrighty. Bows will open the door slowly. Alrighty. Stealthily. Give me a stealth check. All right. So with the uh, random bookshelves that are throughout this room, um, all except for the uh, um, five feet in front of you guys is difficult terrain because it's kind of all mixed in with bookshelves, so you'd have to really move through the bookshelves to get to them. Um, so both is, Bose is able to open up the door. Um, go ahead and give me another perception. Actually, I can get perceptions for everybody. Let's see. Well, just the four of you on the list. All right. So as you guys are um, kind of surveying the room through the door that you see, um, you see there are um, three uh, what appears to be undead creatures that are inside here. Um, and you see... They're going to have a weird name to them, but you can see that they're kind of covered in worms. So there's one that's there. There's one there. And then there's another one that kind of looks a lot different. So um, I'll just bring up the pictures here so you can see what they look like. So the one in the back, um, kind of the southeast side, um, sort of um, is kind of hunched over and, and is uh, kind of that appearance there. And then the other ones... Um, the other two that you see sort of on the west side of the room are standing just as they are in the picture here, unmoving with the sword kind of in between their hands there. And you kind of see these worms sort of kind of crawling all over them. Um, and um, the the ones that are standing upright, um, here's kind of the description. The, they have a Baroque armor that kind of covers every inch of the uh, skeletal figure, every inch save for two gaping eye sockets. Uh, the ornate steel and silver plate uh, carries a sickening green sheen um, from uh, and from one of the armor's many well-crafted joints, small green worm wriggle, uh, wiggles to be free. Similar worms writhe and slide between many of the armor plates, yet the creature's grip on its massive greatsword remains firm and hints at deadly skill. So that's that one, the one that's tall and upright. Um, the other one uh, that is kind of hunched, hunched over is actually um, looking through some books uh, that are there. So he's actually kind of kind of hunched over and, and uh, almost as if he's reading uh, one or two of the books that are there. Um, and he's kind of a, a stooped creature that's uh, kind of uh, sheathed with uh, incomplete plate armor, uh, over which lies uh, tattered remains of an ancient robe of state. Uh, the creature's uh, shrivel, shriveled and tortured limbs teem with writhing hordes of green worms. Uh, these worms move over the creature's decayed body and crawling between the plates of his armor. You guys do have a surprise, so um, why don't we go ahead and roll for initiative here, and that way you guys still have your initiatives on there. And then we can do our surprise rounds.